After selecting the content we wish to transmit in accordance with the intended learning outcomes, we need to design which content type and narrative structure we want to use. Furthermore, it's helpful to design the content format and the source to start from. In terms of formats, there are many possibilities. Together with oral transmission, we can use videos, text, images and slides. The advice is not to use a single format, but to mix them up, creating a multimedia experience. During the design phase, we should focus not as much on the creation of particular effects, but on the achievement of the predefined intended learning outcomes. In short, it's helpful to adapt the means to the end, and not vice versa, maintaining criteria of simplicity and plainness that in many cases support comprehension and learning. Different formats require different resources in terms of time and tools. To compensate for the scarcity of resources, it is possible to map and select all present materials and transform them into something new and effective. For example, we could transform the format of the content. Text-based question could be turned into an online quiz assigned during class activities to activate students' attention. Careful though, there is another dimension we need to consider when designing the content, and it's the source we start from. Being a teacher designer doesn't mean to self-produce all of the contents. It's possible to use materials produced and supplied by publisher or by others and released as OERs, or Open Educational Resources. OERs can be used by teachers with their students and modified based on their needs. In this way, the production of new materials can start from a pre-existing content that can be transformed and integrated both by teachers and students. OERs can be downloaded, reused, modified and shared. They are accessible to anyone for free and are, as the name suggests, open, not protected by copyright. The teacher designer can use them with different possibilities defined as the five R's. Retain, it's possible to download the work and keep it. Reuse, it's possible to use it in various contexts. Revise, it's possible to adapt and modify the work. Remix, it's possible to integrate it by mixing it with other materials which can be our own or produced by other authors. Redistribute, it's possible to share the material. The five R's are covered in legal terms by Creative Commons licenses to protect the author and their rights, but at the same time to foster their reuse and sharing. Creative Commons licenses offer a variety of choices. The license that gives the most freedom allows the material to be modified and distributed even at a commercial level, after giving the author attribution in the manner specified by him. The most restrictive allows for the material to be shared only after attribution. All the materials that can be modified, so with no clauses prohibiting the right works, are considered OERs. Teachers are often resistant to using resources produced by others. Their concern is about availability or quality of the resources, both in terms of content and visual graphics. In terms of availability, the OER movement is evolving exponentially. The number of portals and platforms gathering these materials and giving advice for the design and integration of open materials is growing constantly. While in terms of quality, many portals require specific criteria in order to contribute. Often, a review process guarantees the shared materials quality. There are many opportunities in using OERs. OERs aren't just materials to be used in class, so slides, tests, audio, video. They are also something that can be useful to design a course, such as a syllabus, bibliographies, exercises, exams, or the development of blended formats, for example, with MOOCs. As we have seen, the teacher designer can act on various dimensions when designing contents. There are various types of contents, different narrative structure and formats through which we can convey contents and various sources to use or from which to start. 
there are also various choices we must make, not only in terms of production, but also in terms of selection and use. The guides are always the intended learning outcomes we tend to reach.